Reporter Steve Swat says the benefit trimming affects nearly 800,000 Californians. Peace at hand. Last July, after tense negotiations, lawmakers decided that California's elderly, blind, and disabled residents, who also are poor, must share in the pain of balancing the budget. More than three-fourths of a million Californians fit into this category, and because of their situation, they not only are entitled to Social Security from Washington, but supplemental benefits from Sacramento as well. Taken together, the benefits total $630 a month for a poor, single senior. In three and a half weeks, the U.S. government will increase its share, but California will cut its payments correspondingly. The state thus saves money as it tries to erase red ink. The senior loses ground to inflation. Even without the increase, benefits for the state's elderly, blind, and disabled are among the highest in the country, but so too is California's cost of living. That rents don't uh, get frozen, and um, that when, when uh, prices increase, People who are on the margin, who don't have extra money to spare, are just not going to be in a position to, uh, to pay the extra amounts. And if you look at the, the kinds of rents that single people are paying, and look at the uh, fair market rents for studio apartments, you can see that they eat up, depending on where you are in the state, 60 to 98 percent of, of, a, of a monthly income. And when those go up, um, there will be people who will be homeless. Advocates for the poor, elderly, and disabled are bracing for more possible setbacks in 1991, given California's deteriorating budget picture. During his campaign for governor, Pete Wilson was asked about that possibility. I think that those who are the truly needy, the aged, the blind, and the disabled, are the last people who should feel any cuts, because they are in fact truly needy. Wilson will lay out his budget priorities next month. In Sacramento, Steve Swat, Channel 3 reports. According to a Social Security spokesperson, some states don't supplement federal payments at all. Stan? Lodi Smoke. Where the news comes first. With Stan Atkinson, Carol Bland, meteorologist Rick Griffin, and Walt Gray with sports. This is Channel 3 reports. And you, you don't have no no uh, extra money for anything. I mean, not even diapers or nothing. If you got to pay SMUD and PG&E and the phone bill and you know whatever else, you, whatever else in between, you have no money. Silva. California's welfare recipients are cringing tonight after the governor proposes axing a huge chunk of the state's health and welfare budget. Those st uh, staggering welfare cuts lead our evening news tonight. Governor Wilson calls the $131 million hit to welfare a necessity brought on by the fact that the number of recipients is growing at four times the rate of the state's population. Wilson says the increasing welfare burden is eating into other programs, and now's the time to cut. AFDC recipients, like 19-year-old Lonnie Silva, would have their welfare payments reduced by 10 percent immediately. Then, after six months, any able-bodied adult continuing on aid would have another 15 percent cut for a total of 25 percent. At the same time, Wilson says he'll put more money into job training and education programs in order to get people off of welfare and into the workforce. Silva admits she has no skills to find a job. So if you have really no skills, you can only apply for Burger King or McDonald's or, you know, or Taco Bell or something like that. And that, that, don't, that don't raise a family. That's not enough money to raise a family. The governor's initial proposed cut of 10 percent would shrink welfare benefits from $663 a month to $597 a month, still 55 percent above the national average of $383 a month. The governor's proposals today set the stage for what promises to be a lengthy and a very bitter partisan battle over funding for the state's welfare system. Joining us from the newsroom tonight is an attorney for the Western Center for Law and Poverty here in Sacramento, Casey McKeever. Even with the governor's cuts, the cuts that he's made already, the monthly payments still are way above the national average. Uh, the governor maintains that a lot of Californians feel that welfare recipients ought to be willing on that basis to give a little. Well, I think welfare recipients have given a lot. Uh, there were major cuts, unprecedented cuts last year, and uh, they've already caused great hardship and increasing lines at, at the shelters and food banks. Um, California has the highest housing costs in the nation and the lowest percentage of AFTC recipients who receive subsidized housing. 
So uh, I don't think it is fair to require even further sacrifices from a million and a half children who are the most vulnerable and, and weak in our society. Also with us tonight, as you know, Mr. McKeever is the uh, director of California's Health and Welfare, uh, Russell Gould. We'd like to call him in and uh, ask him uh, to respond how he, on behalf of the governor, responds to, uh, to that, uh, that response of yours. Mr. Gould? I think anyone who's looking at the welfare system within California objectively knows that it's a broken system. We currently have welfare recipients growing uh, four times faster than the population of California. And that's not just something that's happened recently. It's happened over the last four years. We also know that our grants are substantially higher than the rest of the nation. We have 12% of the nation's population and 26% of the welfare costs. That's a burden that California just can't sustain. But more fundamentally, we want to change the whole direction of the program. California's welfare program right now has no work incentive. We want to be in a situation where people can go out and earn income and develop job skills and have that income supplement their grant. That's a new direction for California and it's the right kind of welfare reform for the future. Okay. Mr. McKeever, uh, given the dire straits that the state is in budget-wise, were you the governor, uh, what options would, he, would you have taken last night? Oh, well, I think there are plenty of options to take um, if one decides to more fairly demand sacrifices from people in the state who can better afford it. There are plenty of tax loopholes and plenty of revenues that would not drive businesses out of the state that could fund adequate services. We're in the midst of a serious recession. Uh, needs are increasing, and this is not something peculiar to California. It's happening across the nation. Uh, even states uh, bordering California have had higher caseload increases than California. So uh, to demand that uh, some sacrifices be made by the more privileged who have done so well over the past decade is not unfair. It would meet basic human needs, which I think uh, is something fundamental to any decent society. Mm -hmm. Okay, that would have been your choice. Uh, Mr. Gould, uh, did the governor do uh, all he could do? I think it's clear that he made some very clear choices on where his priorities are. And first of all, I think everyone's paying high enough taxes. I think the people in California are very clear that their tax burden, which is among the highest in the nation, is as high as it should be. Beyond that, when you look at the welfare program, there's no question that there are opportunities for people to go out and earn income, and that when we make that kind of change, it's the right direction for the future. But in addition to that, I think that they recognize that health care and other kinds of education for children are a priority, and that's the kind of priority that the governor identified and was very clear in this budget. But, Mr. Gould, a cut in welfare spending is going to end up costing more money down the road, isn't it? Uh, public housing, other issues, uh, Medi-Cal, uh, you simply can't uh, cut off the process. Well, we're not taking anyone off of the Medi-Cal program. We're putting a priority on the health of low-income people. And in fact, we've created a new program to provide for health care called Checkup. So uninsured children up to age six have an opportunity to get um, health care, some of the important primary health care that all children in California should receive. Is we've this... created a new program that we think will very much assist in that area. Mr. McKeever, is this a death knell for the program? Well, I don't think that the kinds of proposals that are being made are adequate to the needs. I think the, the checkup program may be an improvement, but doesn't begin to approach the health care needs of, of millions of Californians who are uninsured and doesn't provide the kind of incentive to get a lower paying job that is necessary. Um, I think there are just going to be millions of Californians who are going to be suffering. Kids are going to, to school. Um, inadequately housed, inadequately fed, inadequately clothed, they're not going to be doing well. They're not going to be competing well. You can't take food off the table and take shelter away from people. Uh, Mr. McKeever, I'm sorry we've run out of time. I wish we had more time for this. It has been uh, productive and informative. Thanks to you, Thank Casey you, McKeever from the Western Center for Law and Poverty, and also to Russell Gould, the state's director of health and welfare, our live guests here for some questions and answers tonight. Uh, the cuts in health and welfare are just part of California's proposed budget, as the governor laid it out today. The schools, he says, are going to be a top priority, and the prison system is fully funded. But because of fiscal restraints, the governor says he wants reduced hours at a lot of state parks. Here's our political reporter, Steve Swat, now with more. Sounds like it's going to be a people on AFTC, most of whom are children, who rely on that program for income support seem invisible to lawmakers who make cuts in safety net programs without appreciating the impact their decisions have on the daily struggles of the less fortunate. The coalition of groups announced that it is filing a lawsuit against the state on behalf of welfare families.
for drastic action. These are the types of things that we need to do if we're going to really reform uh, the welfare system. To assume that there are people on welfare simply because they don't want to work is, I think, mistaken and uh, somewhat heartless. As special interest groups band together, they talk about campaigning for fair share. Budget shortfalls can be picked up by closing tax loopholes for the rich, they claim, not taking monthly benefits from the poor. To punish children uh, because a parent is on welfare makes absolutely no sense, and I think the voters will figure that out. Coalition groups say lawmakers need to figure it out as well. They predict that opinions on the new welfare issue will become a political litmus test for voters come election time next November. In Sacramento, Gordon Tokumatsu, Channel 3 reports. In Grass Valley, about 100 residents there are...